In this video, we'll be discussing how to calculate a molecular formula. A molecular formula is a formula expressing the actual number of atoms in a compound. The, mo the molecular formula, um, that's what you're accustomed to working with. That's what we've been doing um, you know, since the start of the semester. So you're already familiar with the molecular formula. This video um, will just be a discussion on how to calculate molecular formula um, given um, some empirical data. Use the following formula to help you determine the molecular formula. Now, I don't know um, this is necessarily a formula, um, but this is how you can kind of think about it. If you take the molar mass of the molecular formula and you divide that by the molar mass of the empirical formula, that should give you some whole number x. Once again, um, this will come out to be a whole number, probably a small whole number. Um, I don't know, probably a single digit small whole number. Now once you get that small whole number, if you multiply that by the empirical formula, that will give you the molecular formula. Now I know you're not really multiplying by the empirical formula, um, so I, I think this will kind of make a little more sense when we look at an example. And here's an example. The compound in the previous example, this was from the previous video, had an empirical formula of CH2O. Calculate its molecular formula. It has a molar mass of 180 grams per mole. So let's use um, this template here. Now what number is this? It has a molar mass of 180 grams per mole. Well, as it turns out, um, if we give you a molar mass, that molar mass is going to be the molar mass of the molecular formula. Okay? So we know the molar mass of the molecular formula is 180. Let's divide that by the molar mass of the empirical formula. Now here is the empirical formula. So calculate the molar mass. Remember, carbon is 12, hydrogen is 1, and oxygen is 16. So it should be 180 divided by 30. If we do 180 divided by 30, that gives us a value of 6. So let's use the second template. So this is our value 6. If we multiply 6 times the empirical formula, that will give us the molecular formula. So let's do 6 times this. 6 times the empirical formula. So instead of having one carbon, two hydrogens, and one oxygen, we'll have um, all of these multiplied by 6. So it will be 6 carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. So here is our molecular formula. This was the empirical formula, the smallest whole number ratio, and this is the actual formula. Notice you can reduce this, of course, to one, two, one, and that again would be just the empirical formula. Now, I don't know if this is a correct way to think about um, empirical and molecular formulas, but this is kind of how I think about it sometimes, especially when I was a student. If the molecular formula is 180, but the only thing that you know is the empirical formula, and that the molar mass of the empirical formula is 30, it's almost like how many of the empirical formulas can you fit into the molecular formula? And in this case, it's almost like you can fit six empirical formulas into one molecular formula. So that tells us that the molecular formula is actually six times bigger than the empirical formula.